Hello my soccer universe, here you are, is back, yay, wearing my first ever Milan jersey, that's number two in my collection, I'll probably put it on Twitter today as well. Yep, um, not so much action so far because uh, we all had only seven games, but yeah, let's talk about this because it's always exciting to see. There were at least, to my opinion, two interesting uh, definitely two interesting, if not three, actually, I, I would say three interesting story, storylines in there. It starts with Fiorentino Torino, who have now Ciampolo, the coach who had Milan uh, last time. Uh, but I have to say, it was that game was all Fiorentina uh, from all I could see, especially in the second half. I was mostly watching the second half. Um, there was not much from come from Torino if they botched their attacks. Fiorentina already had early a goal uh, called off by Biragi, rightfully so. But when Chiesa then turns on his turbo and uh, passes across Castrillo, he just needs to pull it into the internet. Yes, Torino had a few chances, but it was a very well deserved win for Fiorentina in this one. Um, the late game on Saturday was Verona against Roma, and I have to say that this game ended goalless was a little bit of a travesty. Uh, three times the crossbar was hit and there were uh, quite a few chances. It was not your typical nil-nil. Uh, Verona, right before the half, uh, unbelievable how they couldn't. Uh, I think it was um, the ball hit the bar and it fell straight onto to the head of uh, Verona attacker. Gaping goal and he puts it over. Uh, a little bit later, same thing, uh, I don't recall the names now, who, who did it? A uh, wide shot that just touches uh, the bar and then goes down. Uh, should have made well, one nil or, or, or the second half, and the same thing goes um, for a long shot by... No, I need to look it up. Uh, Spinazzola. Uh, I think Di Carmine was the one who put the first one over. Um, and was it Di Marco who had the second one? Could be. I'm not uh, one there. So it was actually live, a lively game that ended nil nil. Um, I think both will not be too unhappy with that result. Aiden Jake, of course, not playing for Roma. He is more or less on, on his way out to be replaced by Arkadiusz Milik, and that's also another really interesting sign. I saw actually also Parma Napoli most of the game, and it was a very stale game at the, at, at the beginning. I was also not very impressed by the jerseys there, especially Parma looked weird. And I was then completely flabbergasted that Taverasa had been sacked by Parma, because I thought he did an overall pretty good job. Uh, but you know, I'm happy for Leo Liverani to step in. Um, as I said, kind of tight tea this affair and then on the 61st um Catuso puts in new signing Victor O Simen and the game changed almost immediately uh he kind of uh bounced the power but of the power attack in such a way that Mertens just had to put it in uh in the 63rd Insigne in a similar attack uh, hit the post and then much later it was a very bad uh, uh, pass out from, from from the goal that uh, Insigne intercepted and it got into the net so uh, or that was in, in, in intercepted and Insigne then pulled it into the net. Give Napoli a rather comfortable 2-0 win in the end. Fully deserved there was not really much coming from Parma. Uh, fully deserved was also what Genoa was uh, showing against Crotone uh, within 10 minutes the game was done. Uh, Destro Nicely played um, attack, made it 1-0 and then Pandev uh, with a great chip, 2-0. Um, Crotone though stayed in game, it was not, uh, they, they, they were not the underdogs, they were just couldn't conquer convert, they could convert one when the Riviera in the 28th, makes it 2-1 but then Zappa Costa puts the two uh, goal cushion and a lively first half, it was uh, ended. 3-1, second half, no, not so much, but Piaka adds a fourth one. Sassuolo Cagliari, game that took a while, it was only in the, at the end when actually Simeone, son of Diego Simeone, um, puts Cagliari in the lead. I'm surprised that Cagliari has an Adidas, but hey. Uh, and he also made a second goal that was then ruled out for offside, rightfully so. He was just a little bit too... Uh, fast and then a wonderful figure Buravia uh, makes it 1-1 just before the end 
of the game. So both teams, and I think both teams have probably, you know, they could push for Euro for Europa League spots if they get on the roll. So curious to see that. But I think it was all about the last two games. Everyone was looking to Turin uh, to see how will Juventus uh, play under Pirlo. And to be honest, um, while it was not perfect, it looked really good overall. Uh, I was especially impressed by Weston McKinney, who was a driving force in midfield. And uh, I really liked, he comes in, this uh, young American from Schalke, comes in and discusses with Ronaldo. Uh, nonchalantly how to play and and, and and so on. It was another new signing, Kulusevski, that got Juve off to um, a good start when he just put in a, a, a rebound from outside of the, of the box. Really nicely taken. So Kul Kulusevski is another very exciting player. And if you look at the lineup for your, for, for Juventus uh, with uh, Frabotta, <laughs> of all players, McKelly, Rabio and Quadrada, and then Ramsey, Ramsey in front, you would think no, but they actually gelled. Ramsey was really good, Mess, good. Wes McKenney was good, and Rabio that was working, uh, surprisingly. I know that Ronaldo doesn't prefer to be uh, alone on front or you know being supported by Kulusevski. He just would, he would he rather would have a three line, but you know they are missing now this uh, central striker that Ronaldo pr uh, provides and has to be now. But yeah, I have to say, Ronaldo could, could, could have scored. His shooting boots were not yet, yet well, um, how to say, calibrated. Uh, he hit the post once. Uh, in the second half, um, Bonucci makes it then the second goal that was kind of hanging in, 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 in India for a long time. And Ramsey assists Ronaldo to make, finally get on the scoring sheet. But overall, I have to, I have to say, if you're a Juve fan, you must feel good about this Juventus side uh, and this start. Yes, it was only Sampdoria, uh, but then I think as Ranieri is, as that side is hopefully not playing uh, against relegation. This, I mean, yes, they will be in the conversation, but I think it should not be an immediate threat there. So, um, and Sampdoria has been giving Juve always a little bit of trouble. So, good, good, good. Good, I also have to, have to say, largely for Milan. I was missing the end product, but Milan played really nice forward, uh, nice passing. Uh, what you would come to expect, meanwhile, from Milan. Uh, but the end product was going. I mean, uh, Zlatan as Ronaldo, uh, the calibration was not quite there. Also, Cialanoglu um, started bright, brightly, but then disappeared a little bit. But I, I really think Cialanoglu in good form, and I think he, he will get there, there again is absolutely uh, vital. Um, I also liked, you know, that they didn't put in all the new signs that they went with, the, um, that purely went with, the, uh, more or less with the formation that we had last season. Uh, yes, Romagnoli is missing, uh, but Gabia made a good, um, yeah, made, made, made for a really good replacement. So I have to, I have to, have to say, uh, the overall performance was good. The one thing though is that I have to say in the first five minutes or so, Bologna was really pressing Milan hard and I thought, oh, this is, this does not look good. But then once Milan showed their, um, uh, Danger, especially with Hernandez going on the uh, um, left side, really then uh, put Bologna on the back foot. I think they were only for five uh, minutes really dangerous. Then it was all Milan for most of the time. And finally, they get the breakthrough when an Hernandez cross uh, he connects with Ibrahimovic very, very nicely to make it 1 0. Uh, Ibrahimovic should have scored. A second one already in the second half. At that time, uh, Salem Marcus came on. I have, have to say, he was actually much better than Castillejos. It gave them another, um, you know, step in 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 in, in way. Then a uh, free kick was initially given. That was then covered in a penalty because the foul was in the box, and Ibrahim was just slams it in the fiftieth. Should have made a fourth. Uh, a third and a fourth, I remained that. What I did not like is then when all the other ones come on, I mean, Brahim Diaz came, came on and immediately showed that he will be a bright uh, player. But then, you know, bringing Duarte and Tonali on at that moment, on in the last 10 minutes, suddenly Milan got sloppy. And uh, there were some saves from um, Donnarumma that needed to be made. 
uh, where he actually saved quite well. I mean, maybe, maybe it wasn't all out bad for him to get a clean, clean sheet and he had to work a little bit for it. But I didn't like that Milan then uh, lost a little bit of cohesion towards the end of the, of, of, of the game. Only when Dykes then got sent off with a second yellow, I think that kind of then decided uh, the game and it would add 2 nil. I actually thought with a little bit more concentration, like Juve, you will it would would be more concerned. Milan could have gotten a third, if not the fourth, and would sit now top of the table. Uh, speaking of which, uh, the first table, of course, sees now Genoa on top. But you know, uh, again, the first tables of any season are never that telling. Uh, but Genoa is on top uh, ahead of Juve, Milan, Napoli, Fiorentina. Had a good start. Um, you see that probably have slightly changed, especially for Atalanta, who are now uh, out of the top four um, projections in a way. But that is mainly because Atalanta have not played. Same thing goes for Inter and Lazio, but they are the probabilities are not uh, as affected or the projections. Let's put it, put it that way. Again, doesn't say much at this table. However, we will see those teams and we will start with Torino Atalanta. That I think was a 0 7 the last time they both was around. So curious about how this will go. Cagliari Lazio was also a pivotal game last season because that was the one where Cagliari took a nose dive with a late win by Lazio and Lazio has just started flying. Inter Fiorentina is a classic Serie A matchup. So looking forward to that one too, to be honest. I think Spezia Sassolo is a sleeper because Spezia kind of could be an interesting team to watch uh, and Sassolo also. Napoli Genoa, two teams that won. Um, I think the big one, of course, is Roma against Juve. And as a pregame snack, you can watch Crotone against Milan. So, very exciting. That's what I'll be watching. Let me know if you watched any CRC around, what games you watched. Um, if you agree with my assessments of these, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.